Hello, my name is Robin Walker and I'm based at SRUC's campus in Aberdeen in the north of Scotland and my presentation today is about the alternative approaches to homegrown protein production, specifically looking at yield and quality characteristics of micro silage made from legume cereal intercrops. So for some background, um, there's an increased concern about food and the feed security, particularly in relation to protein not only in Scotland, but the UK, the EU and many parts of the globe. There's also a greater commitment uh, in terms of sustainable forms of food and energy production, so growing more with less. And in terms of production of protein crops for animal feed and especially for human food use in the UK, it can be quite problematic. So the typical um, protein crops that you would find would be peas, beans and lupins and not very much else. Um, but for getting acceptable yields and quality of these is actually quite difficult to achieve, particularly in the north of the country uh, where Scotland is based. So we're looking at protein crops for livestock. Rationale behind this is that livestock production systems depend on our ability to provide the animals with sufficient quantities and quality of energy and nutrients. And in terms of protein, often that's the first limiting uh, aspect and it's also the most expensive ingredient. Now, if you're looking at monogastrics, for example, pigs, poultry and salmon, that's normally provided in the diet in the form of concentrates. But if you're looking at ruminants, for example, cows, sheep and deer, um, obviously we're using forages which utilise their rumen, but the, often it's supplemented with uh, protein as well from the concentrates. So we're looking at investigating options for protein production in Scotland, really to just try and encourage farmers to think about growing more on farm rather than buying it in. Um, typical protein crops, uh, although still relatively minor, would be beans, peas and lupins. Um, but we've also investigated more unusual protein crops like lentils, which we'll come on to later on. And really we're trying to demonstrate uh, some alternative practices as well. So in this case, intercropping uh, with a cereal. And you can see on the right hand side here with the arrow, that's where the sites were located. So I'm going to be talking about two years of our trials. So this was from 2018 and 2019. Um, the trials were based uh, near Aberdeen and a replicated block trial uh, with four replicates. All the crops were spring sown. So we looked at field beans with and without spring barley. So the variety of bean was Fuego and the Westminster was the barley variety. And we looked at sole crops of each of these and also 40 uh, to 60 ratios and 60 to 40 ratios in terms of uh, typical seed rates. We also did the same for pea. Um, in this case, uh, 04 was the variety used for the peas. Uh, lupins, we used iris as the variety. So again, the same uh, set of ratios uh, and sole cropping. And then we also, just for some novelty, uh, looked at lentils. So we were looking at the variety Anisia, which was suggested by a Swedish colleague. Uh, and we had that at a high rate and a low rate um, mixed with Firth Oats as a support crop. And we also had a barley crop as a control for these. So we used a similar approach to grow these crops in both years based on known agronomy or suggested agro agronomy in the terms of lentils and the sowing date was mid-April or there or thereabouts and we had a yield and quality sampling regime. We were looking at multi-use options so not only the silage but also the combinable grain and we were investigating the feed in value of the micro silage through lab analysis. So what do the crops look like in the ground? Well this is just an example of beans and barley so on the left we have 100% bean uh, the centre picture we have 60% bean and 40% barley and on the following uh, on the right hand side we have a 40% bean and 60% barley in terms of seed rate. So here we can see the bean sole crop on the left and the bean and barley intercrop on the right hand side later on in the season. So here we can see pictures of the pea and barley early on in the season with the 100% peas on the left hand side and the two different seeding ratios in the centre and right hand side of the picture. And this is what the peas and spring barley crops look like uh, later on in the season. So again, this is the lupins and the barley early on in the season with 100% lupins on the left and the two different ratios of lupin and barley in the centre and on the right hand side. And here we see the lupin sole crop on the left and one of the lupin and barley intercrops on the right later in the season. 
and lentils as i said was a more unusual crop and here we can see early on in the season the low uh, seed rate on the left and the higher seed rate on the right hand side and here you can see the two different sowing densities of the lentils with the low rate on the left hand side and the high rate on the right hand side uh, later on in the season Salad yields between crop and treatments were more consistent in 2019 compared to 2018. Uh, the brown columns are 2018 and the green ones from 2019. 2018 was a particularly dry year, which appeared to benefit the productivity of the peas, the beans and the lentils, although lupins were significantly less productive in that season, as was the barley. Proportionally, the greater the grain legume component in the mix, the more productive the treatment was in 2018 and the silage yields in 2019 were much more similar across treatments, with the barley also performing much better relative to many of the other test treatments compared to the previous year. And the sole crop peas, beans and lupins were less productive than any of the mixes contained in barley, irrespective of the seed treatment used. The crude protein content of the silage produced in 2018 and 2019 based on its percent dry matter was generally greater for the 2019 grown crop treatments compared to the equivalent crop treatments grown in 2018, the very dry season. The crude protein content of the barley silage was always right at the lower end of the range across the treatments in any one year. No data was taken for the 2018 beans as a visual inspection of the silage from the sole treatment and the bean containing mixtures uh, looked like they had had microbial spoilage so didn't merit further analysis. As anticipated, the greater the proportion of grain legume species compared to barley contained the greatest protein content, and this was consistent in both sampling years, but with a greater range shown in the less arid 2019 uh, season. And the lentils performed similarly well in both growing seasons, as did the lupins to a lesser extent. The silage protein yield was routinely lowest from the sole barley crop, with lupins and its mixes with barley also performing relatively poorly in both seasons. Peas and its mixes with barley performed only moderately well in the dry 2018 season, but produced some of the highest protein yields alongside uh, the beans and its mixes in 2019, with a higher grain legume component also corresponding to higher protein yield. The most consistent performing crop mixture for your protein yield across both 2018 and 2019 seasons was the lentils, uh, with a higher seed rate treatment producing marginally greater protein yield than the lower seed rate treatment, although not always significantly so. so. As part of the experiment, we looked at the silage trace element concentrations and we're representing zinc, cobalt, copper and sulphur here. And the lupins were clearly the best accumulators of all four of these trace elements. Um, lentils were less so, but better than most of the others. Um, copper was the exception where the pea and beans also were very good at accumulating this element. Digestibility values for the silages made from each of the treatment indicate that as legume proportion increased, so did the digestibility across all legumes tested, with this more pronounced in the dry 2018 season. There was little to choose from between any of the legumes in relation to this factor within any one year. The values for neutral detergent fibre followed the opposite trend to that for digestibility, with a lower proportion of legumes in a treatment commonly having a greater NDF content and the barley treatment containing the highest overall value. In conclusion, there is great potential to utilise more homegrown protein sources based on historic evidence and on the current work and that going forward. Intercropping of cereals with grain legumes can lead to a more reliable production of high protein feed in northern UK, for example, Scotland. So this is true of silage protein yield and yield stability between years. We found that the grain legume to cereal ratio 60-40 was preferential. And we also found that lentils performed remarkably well, considering they're not really renowned as a Scottish grown crop. Lupins and lentils were great accumulators of the trace elements we looked at, zinc, cobalt, copper and sulphur. Peas and beans were less so, but were good for copper accumulation. Digestibility of silage with a higher legume proportion was better, and the relationship was reversed for this for the NDF content. So thank you for taking the time to listen to the presentation. I'd like to thank the various colleagues who were involved in the work, 
and also for the financial support of Scottish Government and the EU Remix projects in funding the work.